I'm not having having Ivy's food when she starts, which I'm a bit annoyed about. You're not having Ivy's food when she starts? No. So she's now five months. Yeah. So we're now talking about her going, like, starting foods and stuff. Yeah. And she's going to start eating proper food with us rather than, like, the spoon-fed puree type baby food stuff. Yeah. Um, She's going to be eating with us and whatever. So, uh, Lucy's got this cookbook and she's going to make us these meals. We're all going to sit together and whatever, which will be ace. But then I'm thinking already, well, Ivy's not going to eat all of that. So surely that's going to be more for me. <laughs> like I'm already thinking that there's going to be more on my plate come the end of it. Okay. But then apparently during a conversation, she was talking about it to her mum and said, um, yeah, and whatever she doesn't eat, we'll just, put in the fridge and save for lunch tomorrow. I was like, what? No, no, what? what? No, that, that, that's, not, that's not what I had in my, head, in my mind. That's not fair. Spread the wealth. So my dreams have been crushed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to have at least one and a half worth of meals here, but no, apparently we have to save a meal for the next day. Can you put it on a sandwich? I, there's every chance. Yeah, got it to Lucy, a sandwich. Lucy does a mean Christmas dinner triple layered sandwich Ooh. yeah yeah that sounds like friends that does i think doesn't monica do a um a thanksgiving post sandwich? yeah she might do yeah yeah, yeah. oh that um, sounds good that does but maybe i mean i'm i'm up for putting it in a sandwich <laughs> if, if i'm allowed it that is <laughs> okay well on that bombshell uh hello everybody and welcome to a daft question this is a podcast where we debate the questions you never thought you needed answering. David Evans here at The Stick once again. And joining me every week, as always, is the, the rock to my Mick Foley. This is my <laughs> hey up, David. How you doing, mate? You I'm all right. All right. I'm, I'm all right, as you all right. people up north sort of all say. Right. Yeah, I'm all right. How about you? Yeah, good, man. Good, good. Uh, yeah, can't complain. Are you, uh, are you anticipating more lockdowns? Well, I'm hoping not because, uh, mm. like, Centre Park is on the agenda. We don't really. <laughs> I mean, if, it, like you said in the first one, unless we get locked down whilst at Centre Parks, then mm. live and dream. I'm, I'm um, looking forward to that Mad Max style anarchy in Centre Parks. <laughs> You'll be like the tribal chief. <laughs> I'll be taking my laptop and my mic with to Centre Parks just in case. Yeah. Day three, report <laughs> stuck, <laughs> Centre Parks. It would be, be an extra addition to the podcast. Exchange cornflakes for nappies. <laughs> uh, we've got many questions, obviously, to talk about uh, this week, uh, but let's start off with correspondence. Michael, any correspondence from last week? Oh, he's got yes, his book out. I've got my book out. Is that Was that a gold book? Or... It's, well, it's a gold slash ginger book. Right. So it, was, it, was, it was bought to me by a listener. Yeah. Um, my friend. Um <laughs> Because I only had one notebook, and she saw this gold slash ginger style notebook, and thought that would do for me. Okay, so it's a, this, it was a lovely suggestion. Is this another notebook on top of the other notebooks we've already seen? No, no. So, so the the first one, which was half podcast, half football manager, that's yeah. now purely football manager. Okay. Slash things that we can do if this podcast fails. Okay, good. good, um, good. Whereas this one is just purely podcast. Okay, good. You're pleased to know. Very good. Okay. So on the podcast centric book, uh, correspondence. Um, well, David, last week, mm. you remember that nobody got in touch with us about the pigeon yes. situation, whether yes. there's an old pigeons or young pigeons. Mm -hmm. Three people have got in touch about the pigeons. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so one I think you need to address was from your own sister. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, to remind you about days gone by with you and your granddad. Mm hmm. Yeah, Playing so with pigeons. Yeah, so I can't believe this didn't come to mind. My granddad basically his hobby is keeping and raising pigeons. He's got like a massive pigeon cool. coop. I would say pigeon coop, I think. Like, like two or what's he called? Um Vera and Jack. Jack from um Coronation Street. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> you could say any character in Coronation Street, but like, yep. That's the one. Okay. Um, yeah, he's got like two massive uh, sheds, I would say, in the back in his, in his back garden, the bottom of his back garden, where he keeps loads of pigeons. And yeah, he just races them, lets them out. 
Oh, sweet. Him. Yeah. I remember there were times where we'd go and visit visit him and my nan. And he'd like at the end of the visit, he'd be like, he'd just give us his box. I'm like, what's that? Oh, he's got a pigeon inside. Can you just take it home and just let it out? Call me when you've let it out and I'll time it. So he used to go home and I'd be like, <laughs> just letting this pigeon out of the box, <laughs> flapping everywhere. Call my granddad. And then he used to call us like maybe half an hour later. Say, yep, just come back. It is fascinating. Because you, 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 you were bothered. <laughs> yeah, I was more bothered about not like the swan whacking me in the face. <laughs> yeah. Not a pigeon whacking me in the face. Um, but it's weird. Like it, It's strangely fascinating with pigeons that they can do that with no... It is a bit God. mental. So, and I know there's some... Did you short, do it like... Uh, go on. I'm, so, I'm, sad, there's, I'm sure there's some Channel 5 documentaries that kind of cover the secrets of the pigeon, but... I've no doubt. Yeah. No, what UK TV. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was going to say, did he, like, it, is it a profession? Can you, like, do it? Can you race against other people? Can you think, bet on it, it? I think from what I remember. Or is I think it just he, for fun? Yeah, I think it's now for fun. I think he used to do it in some form of professionalism. He used to have some trophies in his house. And I remember one trophy. He oh, was, wow. Like, one year, the European champion of something, which was quite an accolade. Okay. I think uh, for, for the, from from what I remember, he just basically sent some pigeons to France and they let they let them all go at the same time. Neck. And his came back first. No way. So there is a, I know he has like a pigeon magazine every week as well. A pigeon which, magazine. Yeah, I know, yeah. Who'd yeah. have thought? Like the pigeon trade press. So. Right. Yeah. Oh, fair yeah, play so, to your yeah. But you know, well, yes. Welcome so, to granddad. So. But I should did remember. Did he look after young or old pigeons? He did look after baby pigeons, and I'll tell you this right. now: I don't remember them at all. <laughs> <laughs> which, does, which does not help this podcast. But yes, yeah, see, I've seen lots does of it, pigeons. Does he listen to it? Does he know that you don't take any interest? I don't think he'd know what a podcast is. Let me be honest. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, so you can, we can carry on. Not in grandson. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> So two other people got in touch about pigeons. Yeah. Um, one, brace yourself, David, yeah. was from a guy that we we both have never heard of before. <gasps> Finally, the day has come. Yeah. He's and... also he's also asked us sent us in a question, so I'll be reading that later. Okay. Um, so Rich Ralphs yeah. has um, emailed us and basically sent he sent us a photo of some baby pigeons um, in a nest in his mum's garden. I think he said it was. Okay. Yeah. But then after that, after a few weeks and they're fully grown, they just fly off. So maybe. We don't see baby pigeons because they just stay in the nests until they're ready to fly into the world and yes. roam free. I think that's we... a, yeah. I think that's the case. I did some googling afterwards, and I did see basically it said that they just kind of stay in the nest. So yeah. that's why we don't see them. So which makes me wonder if the older pigeons go off to like some sort of retirement home, <laughs> and you don't see them because and then they just die. So baby pigeons are born and then they're released. Yeah, and then they stay in their adult years roaming the streets. And then when they get to a certain age, they then go off to the old folks home and you don't see them again because they just hibernate and wait till they die. Playing pigeon scrabble. Pigeon scrabble, pigeon bingo. Yeah. yeah. Pigeon. Medicine top up games. Yeah. With the how little many, cups. How many pills have you got today? <laughs> um, And the other one, this is going to blow your mind. Okay. Paul Laurenti yes. messaged us. Was he Based... a, a famous uh, musician at all, Paul Laurenti? I mean, he dabbled. He dabbled a bit on the guitar, oh, and he okay. he sang. <laughs> Just for podcast <laughs> listeners, that was in inverted commas. <laughs> um, it was it was in a band back in the day called The Relevance okay. with my brother and two okay. other guys. Um, yeah, basically, he's saying that birds don't exist. Okay. And he told me to Google it. So I've Googled it. Right. Right. And this is what I found. There exists a conspiracy movement set out. Sorry, let me start again. There's a conspiracy I'm movement. Not, I'm called... not editing that, by the way. We're going to keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> There's a conspiracy movement called Birds Aren't Real which is a movement that claims that the US government genocided birds from 1959 to 2001 by releasing a virus to kill them off. Now, the movement says that the birds have been replaced with surveillance drone replicas that watch us every single day. Okay. And that's why we don't see baby pigeons. 
Because they're all... Because they're all fake. Clone. Yeah, okay. And they're just robots. Okay. In, in It goes on, in their estimates, the government killed over 12 billion birds and replaced them with robotic replicas. But how do they do that in one instantaneous swoop? How do they do that without nobody noticing? Do they just go, look over there and just swap the pitting range? <laughs> Um, wander out at night, midnight, they just go out. Maybe this is why that we've now got a lockdown from 10 o'clock so they can replace the birds. <laughs> That's what they're <laughs> doing. A, a bit faulty or the battery's dying and they can just be like... <laughs> and nobody knows the difference. But no, apparently, yeah, apparently birds aren't real is a, is a thing. Okay, all right. I'm going to be suspicious of all future birds I see in the sky from now on. I will no longer give the salute to the magpie. I'll, say, no. I'll question that magpie. Really? Are yeah. you real? And if, and if there's more than more than one of them, then I'll be very suspicious as, as if I've done something wrong and they need 12 different eyes on me to make sure that I don't do it again. So making sure you're self-isolating, Mike. Forget That's your webcams. Doing. It's the pigeons you need to put covers <laughs> over. Right. That is... Well, so, yeah. that's going to scare me to go to sleep tonight. So there we go. So that's the theory on pigeons. Okay, all right. Any other correspondence? <laughs> um, dishwasher. Right, okay, go on. Um, yes, yeah, so a, a few people joined in on this. Um, our friend of the show, at Magically Magically, he does forks and spoons up, yeah. knives down, so with the okay. handle of the knife sticking up, um, right. to avoid an EastEnders-style death. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play, fair play. Yeah, um, which kind of makes sense, I suppose. Yeah. If you're going to put one of them down, make sure it's it's the sharp ones. Yes. Well, then technically the forks are also sharp. Yeah, I mean, I'd still, I, I don't want to get killed by a fork. That if I fell backwards, that could still do some damage to me. Yeah. I mean, what? Just a a scratch, maybe. Well, it depends how angry Lucy is at the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then we got another one, and I wanted, I asked for more information on this, but she didn't divulge. My mum got in touch. I did see the, this, yeah. yeah. Go on. Um, cutlery up, as the prongs and the blades will damage the cutlery basket. But I feel there's like yeah. a story to that. <laughs> and you're to blame for it. Well, I don't know. Where... She, you should this... know, Michael. Yes. <laughs> she had, she, apparently she had first-hand experience. Like she's making it sound like such a drama. You, you've done something, and she's now mad at you that you haven't realised what you've done. <laughs> um, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit scared of what what could have happened. In a, either me, my brother, or just even before us, and she's never told us. So that's dishwasher sorted. Dishwasher sorted. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. Um, now the original guy at Stu J four two mm-hmm. that asked us about the pies. Yes. Um, he's confirmed that it's not pucker pies. It's a different right. kind of pie. I don't okay. know if you can vouch for this. I, I just buy a pie, to be honest. I'm right, not okay. that bothered of the, the brand of pie in that regard. Um, he doesn't know what the brand is, but it's not a pucker pie. But okay. he has tried a Holland's pie, mm-hmm. and he does agree that they're nice. Didn't good, go as far good. as to say that they're, they're better, but he did agree that they're nice. I'd like to see that the Midland-North divide is easing now and relations <laughs> are starting to come back. All thanks to us. Yes, if 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 that easing can come together thanks to Holland's Pies, then that's great. Um, and if anything, if they could, if they could sponsor this, yeah. we could have a year's supply of pies. <laughs> we could do, brilliant. We could do campaigns, dishing out pies to help ease that northern-southern divide. If, of course. You know, friendships and alliances could be formed over a classic steak and ale pie. If you come across a northerner down in Wolverhampton and I come across, what do you call yourselves? Well, I'd call myself a... Well, it's not to a be... brummie, is it? No, it's not a brummie, no. <laughs> no, I, I learned that quite quick when I came to university. It depends. To call Wolverhampton, you you'd have to say yam yam. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. I remember that, yam yam. Um, but then I guess for you, it'd still have to be, if you have to generalise it still, Midlander still. A Midlander. Right, okay. I'd Let's say yam yam. If you want to go Wolverhampton specific, you've got to say yam yam. Right. Well, so if well, I come across a yam yam, yeah. I can offer them a Holland's pie. Yes. And be like, try this. Welcome to Manchester. Try a Holland's pie. You can say to a Northerner, oh, do you remember Manchester? Here's a Holland's pie. Remember the days. <laughs> and we can bring them both together. Exactly. And it'll be perfect harmony. Exactly. That's what we should do. Um, and finally, a lot of people agreed with me that cheese goes with everything. 
Yes, yeah, sadly, I saw that agreement. <laughs> a few people. Again, cheese do go with many things, not stuffing or chicken uh, and don't, stuffing. Don't knock it till you try it. We did have um, some feedback about the pod in general, which I thought okay. I'd just let you know about. Um, good, good, so good. Do you remember, remember when I answered a question on behalf of Eve, the eyeball question? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Good old Eve. So her and her sister, Grace, yep. um, Eve and Grace Chew, Apparently, really like the podcast because it helps them get to sleep at night. <laughs> good, good. If we can help, if we can help. I thought, yeah, that's a great recommendation. Thanks, girl. Oh, right. Okay. I had a couple of people that weren't happy that it's a day extra. What do you mean? So because because of uh, technical issues, we've had to record this the day oh, after usual. Okay, yeah. A couple of people weren't happy with that, and they were fully expecting to listen to it Wednesday morning. In fact, I've got to tell them that. Hopefully, you'll hear it on Thursday. Yeah, once again, for the second week in a row, it's probably going to be a Thursday because <laughs> internet in Wolverhampton does not like to mix. No comment. No, no comment. Right, shall we get on to questions? We shall. Okay. Michael, last week on the show, we talked about your favourite topic, of course, how to add, if you could add more to a pre-filled sandwich. And mm-hmm. uh, after that fiery debate on Twitter, there was another question that came out of it, which I think we were both like, oh, hello. That's yeah, a question absolutely. to do. And it revolves around the sandwich, but other things you would add to a sandwich at a lunchtime. And it's this question, how would you get the most out of a meal deal? Now, a meal deal you can get from any lovely supermarket or Boots. Boots, I think, is the classic for the meal deal. <laughs> <laughs> I think Boots are the originators, the OGs, I think. The are they? Say, of the, uh, I would say so. I think if you say to me meal deal, I think Boots. I, I No, I've never got a meal deal from Boots. Where, where's your usual um, delicacy? Te- Tesco. Oh, okay. I think okay. I think you get. I mean, again, I've never been to Boots, but I think you get the best options and the best variety at Boots at okay. um, Tesco. Well, I think this is what this question is going to start debating about mm-hmm. the best of the meal done. Now, do we have to maybe set some ground rules for the best I, of a meal deal? I'm listening. I'm I'm listening. Does it have to be? Because usually your classic meal deal is your. I would say your main, which yep. would be your sandwich, your pasta, your baguette, whatever. Your side, which is your maybe your crisps, your healthy option, which some people touch, no, um, mm-hmm. and your drink, which is yep. your classic pops or whatever. Are we going to use that structure? To go I, th- I think that's that's what I would say is your classic meal okay. deal. Okay, how Options. would you maximise your meal deal, Mike? Tell us your, your theory behind your method behind I've, your bandage. I have so looked forward, looked forward to this question. I, I would say this is probably the best question we've done so far. Is your notebook, for, have you got a separate notebook filled because of that question? I, I've got f- that much pages, <laughs> <laughs> about a quarter of the book. Um, right, I think we can, but I, I'll start with a drink. Okay. I think it's, we can easily eliminate water. You don't get water no. in a no. meal deal. No. And you don't get a can either. No. Unless it's, unless it, you know, if you want to get Monster and it's a 500 milliliter can, then fine. But you don't get your 330s or that small excuse of a can that Coke do now. Oh, the really thin one. The yeah. The really thin one. Yeah, 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 I'm not. No. That's just Britain, that is. <laughs> um, so for me, if you're going to make get the most of it, I always get a Pepsi Max. Okay, as a bottle. As a bottle, because... Now, definitely in Tesco, I can't speak for anywhere else, but definitely in Tesco, you get 20% extra yes. for free. I just, I just think that's a ploy from Pepsi Max. E- nearly all bottles are 20% extra free. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a non-20% extra free bottle. No, because I think, aren't they like five... I'm trying to do maths here now. Like, yeah, they're 600 milliliters. Yeah. Where the rest of the bottles are 500. I think it's just a marketing ploy. Be like, oh, 20%. <laughs> Which what? Well, it's worked, David. Yes. <laughs> I agree with that. I think bottles definitely are going to be the drink. Yep. And I would 100% go for the Pepsi Max 20% gimmick. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. So Locked in. that's drink. So what are you going for next? Um, I think as your side. Yeah. Now, originally, someone on Twitter, I can't remember who it was off the top of my head. You might know. Um, but he suggested that he went for a chocolate brownie or a fruit okay. bag. We don't, we, you don't do a fruit bag. No. Don't even offend me with getting a fruit bag. <laughs> um, now, I'm not, I'm not saying a chocolate brownie is wrong. I've just, 
I always prefer having having crisps with my sandwich. I can't yes. I can't not have a sandwich and a packet of crisps. I think it's got to be a packet of crisps, really. Yeah. It's a classic. But then I think you then start going to the crisps you get. Yes. Because you could have you're either going for the amount of crisps mm-hmm. or the size of the crisps, which mean you're probably getting more chews out of it. Yeah, and I think you know. Once you eliminate your boring crisps, so quavers, yeah, ready salted crisps, yeah, I think it's fair game if I'm being honest. <laughs> okay, like okay. if you want your McCoys, then fair play. If you want your sensations, fair play. Mm-hmm. I personally go for barbecue beef hula hoops. I think they're a classic choice. I think they're, so. I would yeah. say they're, they're probably my favorite packet of crisps. So, Be- yeah, if you if- can go to Tesco and get the grab bag, which are the biggest yes. hula yes. hoops. I think to get the most of out of a meal, I think you've got to go for the crisp that's a larger size. There might not be yeah. many, but you get more. So I think I think McCoy's in some ways is the perfect balance because you get more crunch, but it's like a normal packet of crisp, but there's more in there. It's meat. It's yeah. meatier. Yes. Yeah, but it's I, a be, meatier crisp. Before lockdown at work, if I ever went out and got a meal deal, um, I was going through a phase where my crisp choice was... Um, the barb was it beef flavor monster munch oh, okay again okay. you get the grab bag i'm not i'm not a monster munch oh, guy see flaming hot monster munch for me is like top tier number one and they don't they okay. rarely sell it anywhere individually now it's like a major treat it's like christmas day for me if i see a single packet really? of flame hot monster munch it is the best i um, remember i went uh sixth form end of sixth form me and friends went to see I would see somebody in Cardiff for a gig and we drove back. It was really late. It was three in the morning and the guy was driving. I said to him, oh, I'm really fancy some Flaming Hot Monster Munch. I was like, really? Yeah, I really do. There's like five of us in the car. So we stopped at our services just so we could get some <laughs> Flaming Hot Monster Munch. It was a great four in the morning snack, I must say. I, I mean, I, I'd, I'd be all up for that if I wanted barbecue beef through the hoops and someone suggested let's get some, then yes, boom, let's go and get some. Okay, so Chris Boys were saying more of the crunch. Yeah, I, yeah you, you want your, your bigger, not as I said, not the boring ones. No. Um, but yeah, your bigger, extra special, whatever you want to call them. More, more. what's the word? Not. I want to say meatier, but they don't have to be meat flavoured. Do you know no. what I mean? There's like There's more to it. There's a stoutness to it. Yes. Yes. A Great stout. word, David. Thank you. It's the word of the podcast. Stout. Da da da. <laughs> right. So the main deal, the the big kahuna. Right. This, this is going to be. I think there's going to be a lot of discussion between. I us think two. you could. Yeah. I think with this one, you could go in different directions. So, I think the key question now for this one is: Do you go sandwich? Because I think you could go other options. As you, you can, may. and I think this would probably depend on where you get your meal deal from. Yeah. I never get a baguette from Tesco because there's just not enough filling. Okay. Yeah. There's more bread than there is filling. And it's just, that's not what you want. You want it, you want, you want it to be beefy full of yeah. your, of your filling. Um, so we, we're getting rid of just ham. We're getting rid of poor yeah. mayonnaise. I, I think you might disagree, but I'd get rid of tuna. Oh yeah. I will disagree. I I'll thought you might, but, you, yeah. but you're not getting them. You're not getting the most. Yeah. Meal deal. Okay. Yeah. Go on. I'm still having tuna, but go on. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now the sandwich I choose, which I think is the ultimate getting the most out of it. Yeah. Is a chicken triple. Okay. I think so I've... you get three sandwiches, not just two. I think I've heard this urban myth before, but go on. Yeah. So, what, what is in, tri- in a chicken triple? So you get... <laughs> if you had to you, Google this Well, well. no, I, I, I went into the shop the other day and took a photo <laughs> to make sure that I got it right. So Why is he taking a photo of that sandwich? <laughs> so you get your favourite chicken sweet corn. Yeah. You get your good, solid chicken and bacon. Yeah. And then everyone's favourite chicken and stuffing. Oh, right, so you're going for uh, the trifecta sandwich, three sandwiches I think you get one. three sandwiches, which is making, which is definitely, and that's £2.75, so you're really oh, getting bad. the rest of it for, for 25p. You're getting your 20, 20% extra there. <laughs> you are, indeed. Your Pepsi Max con right there. I, I, if you, yeah, 
I don't always go for the chicken triple. Don't get me wrong. Um, I sometimes get a chicken and stuff. Him. But if you if you go in with the full get intention, some, just get some cheese off the cheese and get a packet of cheese. <laughs> But if you're going to do that, make sure it's already sliced. Yes, okay. Because yeah. then it's easier. Just like a massive wedge of cheese, just in between. <laughs> <sighs> I would, yeah, they, they would be, I would, if I'm walking in thinking, right, I'm going to make the most of my three quid. I'm getting it. Pepsi Max, cherry flavour, because you get 20% extra. You get oh, oh, sorry, sorry, well, hang on, go. Cherry flavour? Yeah, because Pepsi Max just doesn't taste like proper <sighs> Pepsi or proper Coke. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> At least cherry, cherry flavour. You're not one yeah. of these that goes for the random flavour. Like you can get Coke Zero vanilla. Oh, that's awesome. Oh god, vanilla. vanilla How Coke. are we friends? Sorry, <laughs> it's a question our friendship here. <laughs> that's that's the next question. <laughs> vanilla Coke is one of the best ones that they've ever brought out. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna just let that slide. Do you do you not get any flavoured? No, can't. Ugh, can't be dealing with that. But you, you, but you're quite happy with Pe- Pepsi Max on its own. Yeah, yeah, straight up classic. Yeah, but it doesn't taste like you want it to taste of something. Oh, tastes like something. You, you might as well. <sighs> Good is old that, Pepsi is Max. Is that what you want today? Yeah. <laughs> you might no, no, David. I think we're gonna have to agree to disagree on this one. I mean, but it's, for me, it's bad enough that it's Pepsi Max. I'd rather get a Coke Zero. <sighs> Yeah, I think you, that tastes more like a Coke than Pepsi Max tastes like a Pepsi. I do, yeah, I, I will agree on that. That Coke Zero, I think, is better. But I'm so entrenched with Pepsi Max now <laughs> as a drink, <laughs> I just can't be bothered to go out and change habits. Okay, well, I'd get cherry, you'd get normal. That's fine. We're still getting twenty percent okay. extra. All right. Anyway, so back on the back on the the sandwiches front. Are, are we saying then that the more, in some ways, if there's more filling in a sandwich, if you can't get a triple factor. Yep. Because most shops probably won't have that combination. Yep. Are we saying that the more content in the sandwich or the baguette? Because in theory, if you get a good sized baguette in the meal deal, that's got a good I'm amount sure, of filling in it. Yeah, I'm sure there's there's shops that do baguettes with decent amount of filling in. Yeah, and we're we're, we're factoring out the pastas, the yeah. um, the the, that's the, the wraps, like the little wraps you can get as well. Wraps, I don't mind, but and they're tasty, but you're not maximising. Okay, so sandwich, good filling or a trifactor, a uh, a sandwich with a good stout. A oh, good stout. Uh, yes, and basically Pepsi Max, um, either normal or cherry flavour, yep. that's 20% extra. What's your what's your sandwich? Are you, are you sticking with tuna? I'll stick oh, either tuna or chicken and bacon. Yeah, okay, well, see, chicken yeah, and bacon's got, as, again, that's, you know, quite a beefy sandwich. Chicken and bacon, and then you've got Chris Boys, again, Monster Munch. Obviously, preferably yeah, flaming okay. hot, but I'll go for beef. And then your Pepsi Max, twenty percent normal. Okay, wicked. And do you do you ever get anything on top of that? What as an extra happy, treat? Yeah. Or are you happy with the, your three items? No, I will sometimes dabble in a Cadbury's dairy milk. The normal bar, or like the one pound. Oh, the duo. No, 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 not the duos. Well, I mean, you could get a duo, but you know, you can yeah. get like the full-on bars, like that's. It's not just one bar, it's like your bigger bar. Oh, like it's it's basically like square wise, it's yeah, 16 yeah, yeah, squares. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no like go that. go for a normal, normal six square, oh. five square. Yeah, sorry, I'm boring. See, no, if I'm in mood, I'll get I'll get one of those bad boys. <laughs> or a kick cap chunky. Yeah, I mean if if I'm not that hungry, then I'll get a normal chocolate bar. <laughs> but if, if if I'm in mood, then I'll get the big bars, okay. the Oreo one, the oh, the dairy milk Oreo. I've not tried that actually. Oh, David, I'm, you I'm try, it. try. It's really. I mean, you can get it in the bars if you want to just, yeah, you know, not, not worry about your waistline. Not live. <laughs> um, but the big, yeah, the dairy milk Oreo is a delight. Okay, I'll and look you can for eat it. it within two minutes. We obviously want to hear people's own meal deal varieties. Perhaps go to the shop and take a picture and be that Indeed. person. And uh, where can people send it to, Mike, so we know for next week? Nice little link there, David. Well, you know. They could send us or tag us in pictures on their Instagrams. Yes. At a daft question. They can tweet us at a daft question. They can email us a daft question at gmail.com. Or they can comment on our YouTube channel, David. <gasps> they can, yeah. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. Where the, while they're watching this. 
Um, just search a daft question and you'll see good, good. all the, well, you'll, you'll hear the first two, but then after that, you'll see all the episodes. <laughs> My sister sent me uh, uh, what's up saying, um, oh, how do I send a question to the podcast? I'm like, you've listened to the last three episodes. <laughs> have you listened? It's the have you listened debate again. My mum was telling me that she she was watching us on YouTube <laughs> and she said, no, if I, dis- if I subscribe, will that cost me money? <laughs> So if, if any of the mature folk out there that are listening, feel free to subscribe to us. It won't yep. cost you a thing, I promise. If you feel we need to say, set up a Patreon, if you want to send us money, mm. then feel free. We'll oh, an just... Amazon wish list. That's a thing, yes. apparently. <laughs> right. Okay. Should we have more questions? Let's do this. Mike, despite uh, you and I being men in our mid-30s, we are still <laughs> big fans of wrestling or wrestling, as the hardcore fans call it. Wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. And yes, we still, we know it's fake, sadly, um, and it's all predetermined, but we can't help uh, seeing men and women just wrestle it out in a storyline format. Um, but the question I want to ask you today, Mike, um, is which wrestling moves do you think actually probably wouldn't hurt in real life? I've I've got three. Okay. Can we caveat this firstly with do not try any of this at home? <laughs> Don't listen to this I mean, thing. We sh- oh, yeah, I'm, we I, should... I, I'm gonna try this and actually realize it's not it it doesn't hurt. Do not try any of these. Someone gets the little sister and puts <laughs> them on the floor, like, stay there. Yeah. Let me do this move and let me know if it hurts or not. <laughs> Yeah, so don't try any of these, but we think that perhaps if it was tried, which you shouldn't, probably wouldn't hurt. Yeah, I've yeah. also as well, I've also got a bit of a, when I was thinking of all the different moves, mm. I've thought of what I think, if we can talk about it, probably the most stupid okay. finisher. And I'll see if you agree with me. I'm quite relieved I get to talk about this for more than 10 seconds. You know, <laughs> uh, I, you know, um, I've talked about before my other previous less successful podcast I used to do. Very successful. Yeah, well, less successful. Um, we I used to use wrestling as a kind of a pop culture reference on mm-hmm. on that podcast. Just sprinkle, you know, little, you know, sprinkle it on there. You did. My word, it would annoy people. Not just I, I, certain I saw listeners. The tweets. <laughs> just certain listeners, but people within the group would really? really hate this. But what I used to find really funny is that people would really the, the non believers, I would like to call them, uh, <laughs> would really distance themselves from it as if it was uh, like a crime. So, for example, you'd say, let's say they brought up in conversation naturally, they'd say something like, um, oh, yeah, I, I saw that video as well. But then they'd go, oh, but I, I'm not a wrestling fan. Let me just make that clear. Right, I'm okay. not a wrestling fan. Almost like you, you, you're trying to distance yourself from Nigel Farage. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Nigel, do you see that Nigel Farage video? Oh, I'm not, I'm not a UKIP supporter. Oh, it used to be like, why? Why? The thing you, is, like, why are you dissing yourself from it? It's not an embarrassing thing. I, if people don't want to watch it in their mid thirties, then fine. But mm. certain, I, I, certainly our generation, yes, a lot of them, like when they were younger, yes, would have watched it. So you know who the Undertaker is, Mick Foley, The Rock, Stone yes. Cold, Triple H. You're aware of all that. So why, why pretend? Mm. But I, you know, like, my if aunt... I was to, and I'd, go on. No, go on. You finish. And I was just—I was just going to say, if I was to—and I nearly did, but I didn't. If I was going to put Mr. Socko in my list, right? People that watch wrestling will know what that is. There's yes. no point like smiling about it. Oh, I remember them days, and then turn to the mate beside him and go, "Oh, but I don't—I don't watch it now." <laughs> but that same mate, if Stone Cold, I, mean, I, nearly, Austin... I nearly said grow up, but we should. <laughs> <laughs> but that same mate, if Stone Cold Steve Austin walks past, he's running over to get a picture. Of course, he is. But is he going to say that to his face at wrestling? No, fake? exactly. It's you know these people who say to me, "Oh, wrestling's fake." I say, "Yeah, that's fine," but you know, mm-hmm. apparently, apparently, dragons are real as well. Yep. So Batman's real. Superman's yeah. real. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, Jack let's and go. Vera from Coronation Street. They're real. <laughs> let's go off these angst. Anyway, wrestling moves. That so yeah, hurt. and I do think we might have to explain to the people that aren't wrestling fans these kind yes. of moves, especially for the audio listeners on the podcast. So, um, so I'm hoping you'll probably agree with me on, on the three that I've got. Okay, go on. So you remember, you remember a guy called Santino Morella? Yes, I do, yes. He had quite the finishing move, didn't he? <laughs> he did. Please explain that to audio so and visual he, listeners. He had the Cobra. Yes. You, you have to describe this still. So basically, on. he would 
towards the end of the match, he would pull out a green tight. Mm-hmm. Where, I don't know where from. Where do we know where he pulled it from? From his, his, his attire, nether reg- his nether regions. Yeah, which is another thing. Like, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> that had knocked me out. <laughs> Just the stench of that. If you imagine you're the wrestler on the receiving end of that, knowing where the sock's been, you're like, oh, God, I've got to have the finisher now, haven't I? Yeah. The moment you're signed up to San- to go against Santino Morelli, you're going to Vince McMahon praying that you win because <laughs> you don't want to lose to that. So basically, the Cobra is he gets a, gr- some, a green tight and he puts it over his, his arm, half of his arm, and then he presses his bicep. Is it his bicep? It's like he's... Um... Elbow, or the side of his elbow. Yeah, as if it's like one of them Nike Air pump it trainers <sighs> from the 90s. And you press it, press it, press it, and your arm comes closer. He moves the uh, the hand so it's facing the opponent, mm-hmm. charges at the opponent, taps him on the chin, yeah. and then the guy just falls over and he's knocked out and he gets a pin one, two, three. I mean, <laughs> that's one of the most ridiculous ones. Um, that wouldn't do anything for me. That's true. I'll come to that one then with... Um, the worm, Scotty <laughs> Too Hotty. Was, yep. Because let's be honest with you, the build up to that was better than the actual finishing move. One hundred percent. That is worth the admission price alone. He, just for the build up. Him and Grandmaster Sexy were probably one of my favourite tag teams as a kid in the yep. old Attitude Era. So try and explain it to people how the the worm worked. Um, so we did this elaborate thing where he would kind of gesture the crowd with his arms open that he was about to do the the move, and then he would. St- he would would he skip firstly? In yeah, he skipped le- skipped and each then, letter and, and each letter W O R M, and then he would then do the classic dance move, the worm down the ring. I'm thinking the guy who's lying there could have got up by this moment. He could have got the pin by then. Yeah. Like, why waste this? You so could have won the tag titles by now. So he does the worm towards the person, then gets up and then kind of swishes his hands like this. Ooh, and then ooh, he just ooh. basically almost like chops him on the shoulder. <laughs> but then the reaction to the, the person on the floor is like, oh my God. I've just been <laughs> shot. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think the worm was fantastic just for the build-up, but the actual execution of the move, you'd, just, you'd be there lying there going, what? what? Do you think that was it? If someone was new to wrestling and you're like, no, honestly, it's not as bad as it sounds. <laughs> honestly, just watch this. That's and see that move. If, if you, you you see so many good things in wrestling sometimes nowadays, you think, oh, that's amazing. It's the one time when someone you know doesn't like it, you show them something and it's a stupid thing. You're like, oh, God, <laughs> God. Every time. <laughs> um, okay, so that's my, one of mine. Have you got, well, you've got another one? Yes, I, and this might be controversial, but I, I, I think you might agree with me on this. Okay. The People's Elbow. Right. I did think this originally. I've changed my mind slightly. Okay. I'll give you my reasonings why. But sure. You, do, do, I'll, you do I'll talk through. So everyone knows who the Rock is. Yes. Great guy of stage, not stage, but of screen and <laughs> I'm sure one day on stage. Um, great guy. And obviously he started his career within WWE. And he's got this finisher that is... Let's be honest, the biggest load of nonsense going, and it's very similar to the worm, but yeah. there's just a, a bit of suaveness about this yeah. compared to the worm. So he's got his opponent on the floor and he stands above his head and he looks to the crowd and everyone knows what's happening. Everyone's like, oh. And he gets his right arm and he pulls his elbow pad off yeah. slowly, throws it into the into the crowd. Now, some kid what? catches it and swaps it for a Bacana set. Yeah. <laughs> Now, one again, the guy could have got got up by now, but no. Yep. And again, this would have been just a normal like I'm going to slam you back to the floor, like nothing serious. But the guy would be on the floor for a good ten seconds yeah. for this. So the Rock throws it into the crowd. Everyone's gene up. His arms are out wide, back into the center, out, back yep. into the center, out. He then runs to one side of the ring. He bounces. He jumps over the guy. He goes to the other side of the ring, bounces. He gets the guy, lifts his leg up, and then drops an elbow on the shoulder. Yeah. And that apparently is worthy of a one, two, three. <laughs> now, if someone did that to me in real life, I'd have got up, eh? But then I'd have just gone, I'd have shot back up and gone, oh, my shoulder, that hurt. Not, <laughs> not staying down oh, for I a th- one, two, three, and then he lifts the, the world championship or whatever. And I think this is where the line we're drawing of would it really hurt comes in because if you try and do that in real life and you get that tip of your elbow and put all your body weight 
onto someone's shoulder or chest, depending where the elbow is, it probably would hurt that person. Uh, yeah, but if you see, I think. If you, uh, but if take you out the elaborate move. It. Take out the elaborate move, and if you actually connect that in real life, I think it's going to cause mean, a bit of pain. Yeah, but nothing. Yeah, a bit of pain, like if someone's it's not at your ear lobe or yeah. something. <laughs> it's not A and E worthy. It's definitely not A and E worthy. <laughs> Um, um, okay, yeah, so I, and I love the rock, and it I, I was hesitant to put it down, but if you if you look at it, it's a bit pathetic, yeah. Right, I'll go for another one here. This is a controversial one, but I'm gonna have to explain my method, okay? The pedigree, okay. right? Okay, so I completely exp- disagree with this, but right? Okay, let me explain the pedigree. So, again, as a wrestler. In real life, you must think, oh, God, have I got to do the? I've got to have this move given to me. Mm-hmm. So Triple H, trying to explain it for the audio listeners, will, and it doesn't sound good when you start it off, <laughs> bend, the, bend the wrestler over, put their head between their legs. So this doesn't sound good. Um, Depends who's listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he'll raise kind of both arms, so cock them up, as it were. Again, all of this is not not sounding great. Um, and then he will jump up while their head's between the legs and just kind of land on his knees. Now, he, my theory with this is their head's constantly cushioned between the legs. Mm-hmm. Even when they he lands on his knees, I guess they're just still squashed within the head. I, I, think, there's some, I think there's some versions of the pedigree where he lets go and they fall face flat. But they don't seem to do that. I think that, is that, that I think that's all the part of the illusion, though, isn't yes. it? I think you're meant to watch that, thinking your face is going right to the ground yes. there, like the same as the tombstone. Yes, because the tombstone. I, I mean, I'm not going to go into it, but the, the the head is stuck in between his thighs. His head never hits the ground, but yes. the illusion is that it hits the ground, and that's more believable than the cobra, the worm, and the people's elbow. <laughs> I just think if you were to, if you were to practice, obviously don't to practice the move. I I think the person comes out of it and goes, "Why did you put my head between your legs? What was that for?" Yeah, if you if you if if you're going to do it safely, David, then yes, th- that would not hurt a fly. No, okay, you, you're just really disappointing there. But you've just ruined the illusion. <laughs> I'll never watch it the same again. Um, right, okay. I've got a second one there. Have you got a third one at all? Too? Well, I, I had the worm, so okay. I, I've got a fourth one, but it's not so much it won't hurt. I think it's just the way it's executed, executed is stupid. Okay. Give us the fourth then, and okay. I'll give you the third. The Stone Cold Stunner. Right. Oh, this was my third. Yeah. Okay. I think we're in agreement. Are you in because... agreement with that one half of the move wouldn't do anything? Well, I think the latter. I, I just think all of it just wouldn't. But so, so again, we'll explain the stunner. Yeah, you kick someone in the belly. Yeah, they bend over, and then Stone Cold would then turn, have his back to the opponent, grab his neck, fall to the ground, and then some reason that guy then bounces back. <laughs> that guy's basically paraplegic. Now this is this is why I think like that, no, if I was to just kick you in the stomach and then get you in a headlock and drop you. You're not going to then bounce back like <laughs> you're made of elastic. You would fall to the ground, and I would debate that that would even hurt you. See, I'm with that. I think if you kick someone in the stomach, that's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. But if you then try and turn around and try, right, hang on a second, mate, just stand, keep there a second, and have them in a headlock yeah. and almost fall to the ground, they're just going to get back up and go, oh, my stomach still hurts. If anything, when I watch that move, I feel more sorry for Stone Cold's ass. <laughs> yeah. Because surely he would get some sort of repercussion and some shockwaves from landing on his ass all the time. And he's, oh. he's um, cocks it. Yeah. Are we, so, we, yeah, are we putting I... pause for dramatic comedic effect there? As well? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with that. My, I just looked at my notes. My random fourth was the RKO. No. I love yes. the RKO. Now, even um, non-wrestling fans in the modern era would have probably heard of the RKO from the meme and that, that went around a few years ago, yep. where they kept photoshopping um, Randy Orton in videos, giving people the RKO, mm. which is great. But if you look at that, again, that's like a, it's a stunner without the kick in the stomach. It is, but, but what I like about the RKO, and 
Is it out of nowhere? I would say, yeah, I would say compared to any other finishing move in wrestling, mm. like there is no build up to it. Mm. You literally, he can, it, from out of, yeah, for, as the tagline <laughs> is, from out of nowhere, he could just jump up and he's got you down. Like there's and, no build up. To and just it to explain, all. yeah, just explain the RKO to people. It, imagine what we've just said about the Stone Cold Stunner, but you just don't kick them in the stomach. You just basically go up to them while they're standing and you drag them down in that headlock. But somehow that person is vertical. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know it's coming, but they know to jump vertically <laughs> to go down. Um, yeah, so I'm going to throw the RK out there. So, okay, so those are the wrestling moves we think actually in real life, if you were to practice them, which we say don't, that actually wouldn't hurt. Which, if we've got time, which one would you say would hurt the most? Oh, okay. I think, I think you're going to have to say there's two really from the same wrestler. I think okay. if done accurately, the tombstone, if you're yep. throwing someone basically on their head, mm-hmm. yes, that would hurt. I think the last ride would hurt as well. Yeah, I'd say the From last From a ride. height, you're throwing someone down on their back. Because this is what I find funny with uh, when people talk about wrestling is that they say, oh, it's all fake and that. I don't think, though, the moves that are practiced in the ring are very much real in the sense of some of the stuff that's done. Oh, they some are, of it, I wouldn't... Yeah, they are being thrown. I, I saw. I remember hearing an interview with Tyson Fury when he did that uh, match with Braun Strowman yeah. in Saudi Arabia. I think he was on Talksport, and the hosts were kind of taking the mick about doing him doing it. And he talked about, well, you know, if you get thrown into the ropes, it's like having barbed wire in your back. Yeah. When, when you're thrown in your back, it's not. Oh, I'll just get back up again. It really hurts. And this is a this is Tyson Fury. And there is some of so, you know, obviously some of it's fake, like. Mm. When you hitting each other in the face, or whatever, or let's just say the Rock laying the SmackDown. Yes. If anybody <laughs> that doesn't watch wrestling listen to this, they are not going to be turned and thinking, "Oh, actually, this sounds alright." This wrestling malarkey. The the SmackDown you say, yeah, I'll give this a go. Yeah. Um, where he's obviously just hitting his thigh instead of hitting his face. Yeah, like, yeah. There's elements to it that is fake, but if you're chucking someone off a thirty foot cage. Mm onto a table, that will hurt. Yes. And that's all we're saying. All we're saying. Right, okay. Send us your suggestions as well uh, for any wrestling moves you think won't hurt at all. Uh, Mike, should we go to the next question? Next question, please, David. Mike, we're both big fans of a 90s game show involving a supermarket called Supermarket Sweep. Hasty to buy uh, Dale Winton, let him rest in peace. Um, and Woods at uni... Are we, we, sorry, are we are we ignoring the Ryland one now? I never even watched it. Did you watch the Ryland one? I, we did, yeah. And it's all right. Yeah, it's not it's not Adele, though, is it? It's 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 not. I mean, no. I don't think there's anyone else that could have done it. I think mm. Ryland did a good job, but <clears throat> it's not the same as good old Dale. No, it's not like the OG, is it really? No. Um, even at uni once, Mike, we did once consider applying to the reboot series of... We did. Um, think it. And then... I just remember the memory because it was filling out the application form and we both had to put a funny uh, funny story in and I had nothing and we just gave up at that point. Really? <laughs> what can you, can you remember my funny? I can't even remember. I, I think you had like 10. <laughs> you were not deciding <laughs> which one. And then I was like, I've got nothing. I think we were both like, yeah, let's just leave it, shall we? That's a similar story as to why I never applied for the X Factor. <laughs> I, I I printed out the application form and started writing it down and it said how would your friends describe you so I thought well okay I'll ask them and I never got around to asking them so I never got around to sending it and that's why I'm doing this podcast I'm not singing in front of millions of people every night <laughs> so supermarket sweep um, but the one thing that's always confused me is what this question will be is in the final round of supermarket sweep when you're going crazy in the aisles mm-hmm. uh, it's not crazy in the aisles what is the official line while you go is it why you go down in the aisles? Oh. Which again doesn't sound good. Right, you you see his blurb and I'll okay. try and Google it. But the question we're talking about here is why don't people go absolutely nuts in the final round and buy all the expensive stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, that is the question. Obviously, for those who somehow don't know what that last round of supermarket sweep is, they have they have about three minutes, I think three four minutes, and they get to go around the supermarket and fill the trolleys with whatever they want, and then they go at the end to a till, they rack up the amount, and then whoever's got the most amount gets to go to like the final final round. And Mike has the phrasing. 
Go wild in the aisles. Wild in the aisles. That's it. Okay. Wild in the aisles. Uh, right. So, Mike, why don't people go crazy and get all the expensive stuff? It's a pressure situation. It must be. Like you've. I watched. I watched an episode, and you think, but then, but what is the most expensive stuff? Like there isn't a. Surely it's a champagne or the alcohol. Yeah, Just put yeah. it with champagne. But is I, I can't remember seeing champagne. They must have done. Uh, the, the, or beer then. What, the, just fill it all with beer. <laughs> yeah, but you only have three items, aren't you? When I watched it, the, the most expensive item I could see was an ironing board. Yeah. And what's that the limit? You That's could only it. have three items. I would guess that, they, that it was stopping people basically getting their arms on oils and yeah. just put it into the... So you could have three of one item, but I can't... I mean, I might be wrong, um, but I, I just remember thinking that you're right, but then when you look into it, there's not a lot of expensive stuff there. Mm, or maybe that was what, because I, I used to always think when they used to do the bonus challenges, like stack the tin cups, yeah. or get the pick and mix. I'm like, what? You're wasting your time yeah, trying to get no. a perfect amount. But that's, I mean, I can't remember what it was for Dale, but in Ryland, that's 50 extra quid. Now, that's yeah. a lot of money when you've just got baked beans for 25p or whatever it is. <laughs> It's the people that go in there and they're specifically choosing things. What are you doing? Just put stuff in the trolley. Yeah, I know. You, you just towns of the essence here. Don't think, oh, I'm not a fan of bonbons. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather miss strawberry drops. Don't, there, don't worry about that. There was always an urban myth that you got to keep the contents. I'd be fine with that. In the trolley. And that's why I thought people were spe- very specific of what they chose. Oh, okay. Because I thought, hang on a second, I'm on a game show, but I've also got to do the weekly shop. So you get so you get your weekly shop and you get money for it as well. I don't. Yeah, I don't because I also heard that even if you lost, you didn't get to the final round. You've got to keep the amount that you racked up. Okay. So let's say you came second, but you got like a grand's worth of food. You got a thousand pound, regardless. A grand's worth. Of, it's not Waitrose. This. <laughs> where, where do you think Supermarket Suite was at? Um, Just an hour full of swans, David. <laughs> Just be plucking them from their, their necks. <laughs> Come on, I've got my three swans. Um, yeah, I, I never... Yeah, I I heard that rumour that you've got all the food. I mean, why wouldn't you apply for it if you got all the food and you got the value? Like, you're getting two weeks' worth of shopping there for exactly, free. Exactly, exactly. Oh, very quickly. Right, it's just remind me. Um, me, and Lu- me and Lucy, um, got nothing to do with Supermarket Sweep, went to John Lewis. Um, okay. We had something to eat there. But both our cards got declined at the same time. We had to use another one. Yeah. And we checked our app and the money got taken out. So I went to the manager and went, excuse me, we got declined, but we've got it's been taken our money. Right, no problem, sir. No problem. We'll give you a refund. Great. Thank you very much. Next day, we're back on our card, the refund. Right. Day after that, both our apps corrected the mistake and gave us the money back for what it initially had taken out. So we've got <laughs> the money back that was declined, but it wasn't declined. <laughs> and we got the actual... Uh, meal back refunded so we ca- we came up with an extra 15 quid each oh, it was beautiful well done. what did you spend anyway, it on um it, it saved for ivy oh what did you really spend well, it that's on what I'm telling lucy <laughs> <laughs> my beer for tonight hey <laughs> um oh. anyway, what, would you, what, would, what would your strategy be you're in it's me and you mike you've got to go first what's your strategy in that in your seconds right so if i'm first i think I think it's best that I get the items that you need to remember. Okay. So yeah. you, you, I think is it three items that he is says this, you have to get. Oh, Dale's Dale's shopping list. So I would, if whoever's first, I think get them. Yeah. And then I think I'd just find myself on an aisle and just grab everything. Why yeah. waste time? Yeah. Messing around different. Uh, not fruit and veg though. You won't get anything in fruit and veg. Sack that off. <laughs> three bananas. It comes to eighty p. No. That's just not trying, what you want. Weighing them on the scales, just trying to get the right amount. Um, so I think I'd stick with one aisle. Maybe go with where the ironing board is. Yeah. Because I think that's I think that's the most expensive item. And then just yeah, because if you think about it, with the ironing board, you'll have your washing detergents and your fabric softeners. They're yep. quite expensive. So I'd yeah. So that's what I do. I think I'd get the three items, go to the wash um, ironing board, get three of them, and then just get what I can on that one aisle. I wouldn't move anywhere yep. else. And what inflatable would you be going after? Can you remind me of the inflatables? Because I can uh, only think off, of one of them. And to off, be fair, I reckon it's probably the one I'm going to go for anyway. Okay, so off the top of my head, you had a banana. Right. Um, you had like the jukebox. Right. 
Um, was there like a palm tree? Um, there might have been a shark. I'm guessing now. But I remember definitely the jukebox and the banana. I'm sure there was a pizza. I don't think I remember the pizza. The pizza slice. Okay. I'm, and that's what I'm getting. That's what I'm going for. Okay. Pizza slice every time. I used to love it when they used to get back to the tills and they scanned it up before they gave them the amount and they used to go through, like, oh, have you got the shopping list and whatnot? When they used to go to the inflatable and they'd rip it off. The yep. sheer disappointment when people get like fifty pound <laughs> or something, <laughs> and someone else gets like two fifty, and you see the look on their face like you jammy git. Oh, I'd be fuming. I'd be so pissed off at them. But you've got to keep a smile though. You're like, oh no, yeah, no, you 50. don't. You don't. I'm not having this. I'd have a look of you, little shit. <laughs> the uh, what do they call it in friends? The polite um, round of applause when someone else wins. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. You have to do that. That's oh. actually that's just remind me of um, if I, again if we've got time of a story from Union. I've always wanted to ask you this. I don't okay. know if you remember it. There was a particular course, um, and we had a deadline to do a an essay or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you handed it in about two weeks before the deadline. Oh, I remember this story. I remember and, this story. <laughs> <laughs> and I hand I skipped the lecture that morning so I could hand it in just before the 12 o'clock deadline on that Friday yeah. to the point where as I left the I left the um, the building, the lecturer came in to pick up the uh, pick up the exact the essays and I got a better mark than you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to gloat so much. I thought, no, it's not fair on David, bless him. Oh, um, I don't know. You, you've wiped my mind now with that story. <laughs> Sorry, David. I'll get my revenge one day. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I was doing some research on this question about supermarket sweep back in the day, and there's a BBC article of um, I was called I Was a Contestant on Supermarket Sweep. Okay. But I was really thinking, oh, there'll be some juicy stuff about this. There wasn't anything. Mm. The only thing was Dal Winton was a lovely bloke to all the contestants off screen. Aww. Basically, which I thought was quite nice. Oh, one thing I did actually find was, do you want to know what the lowest total was on the that supermarket sweep bit, the final bit, when you not, kind of get all your items. No, not You don't really. want to know what the lowest total was? No. Uh, okay. But well, if you've got it to hand, then why not? I've got it to hand, yeah. So, you know, they used to do the subtotal at first. Yes. Uh, that was a nil. Wow. Nil. And the uh, lowest total was £56. Okay. Which makes me think, how have they done a shop... And only come to fifty six. I think I think they they must have struggled. They must have struggled to get the the list. Yeah, and then faffed about with the pick and mix. I think that's the only explanation. Yeah, I've got to get it right, Roger. (laughs) I want my strawberry drops. So we're saying, why don't people go for the most expensive items on supermarket sweep? Uh, Because they're just crazy. Yeah. Okay. Panic. So we do listener questions. Yes. It's time for listener questions. Oh. But I need to charge me. I need to get my charger. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on. Right, I'm going to get a drink. So let's pause right, there. Okay, cool. Now, for anybody in the benefit of doubt watching us on YouTube for some reason, we will keep this in. This isn't being cut out. And while I can see the shadow of the mirror of my coming back, uh, at a daft question on Twitter, uh, at a daft question on Instagram, and at a daft question at gmail.com. And also for Mike's benefit, we're not going to cut this out of the audio. So I'm going to now try and slip in Aston Villa 7, Liverpool 2. Let's see if we can zip it in without him realising, or if he's got this on loudspeaker, we'll find out. But anyway, this is not being cut from the audio, and well, it might be cut from the audio, uh, from the YouTube version. Here comes Mike. He's back again. I'm back. I was just explaining to the listeners that for the YouTube version, we are going to keep this in. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, listen. If, if YouTube are listening, they can put the advert in that bit. <laughs> yes. Uh, right, uh, listener question wise, uh, what have we got? Notebook, yeah, good, good start. So, 
I think we can only start with Richard Ralphs. The one listener we've got that we don't know anything about. Yes. Let's let's give him prime spot. So this Richard... Is, this is going to be a pseudonym, isn't it? We're going to find out this is someone and they've just put a different name on. <laughs> well, I wondered if it was someone that I know from LinkedIn or something like that. <laughs> and I say no. I say if I know them, but obviously just a connection, random yeah, connection that yeah. I've got. Um, but anyway, he asks a very good question. Is it okay to have a favourite child? Oh, no, both of us being fathers, Mike, this is mm-hmm. a difficult question. But it's probably more, I've only got one, so it's quite easy for me to say, whereas you've got two. Oh, the problem is what answer do I give here? <laughs> I mean, I know what you need to say to I thought, you know, the, save the, the your obvious, marriage. The obvious answer is no, there is no, there is no set child that's better than the other. But really, David? Go on, who is it? Who is it? Go on, David, tell and, us, who is and it? And the who real answer to that is... Da, 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 da. No, um, you can't give me that question. The only thing I'd say is I bet you when the kids are older and you are, the, your, your kids are adults, I bet you probably have that feeling of preferring one child over the other. That's do you think, you, do you think, do you think your mum has a favourite out of the four of you? Oh yeah, and it's clearly me. I am clearly <laughs> the favourite. So, right. I mean, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. Would the others agree with that? Yes. They would. Really? They would agree with that. Is it the same I, for your dad as well? Uh, well, I am the sacred son, so mm. out of four. Mm. So. Yeah, it's like this is the last <laughs> chance now. I've got to, <laughs> we've got to get a son now. <laughs> but now the pressure's on me to carry on the, 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 the family name, and we're two girls. Yeah, two the girls. The pressure's on. Um, is, is it gonna, is it going to be a fourth time lucky for you guys? <laughs> oh, okay. Let's not give Catherine any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. I, I difficult one to answer. Sorry, Ralph. I'm but you're saying to, no. I'm going to say no. It's uh, unfortunately not for comedic value. I can't give a full answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. But it's Mary, isn't it? Next question, please. <laughs> it's both children. It's both children, please. <laughs> For the sake of my marriage, it's both children. Right. Question two is from Rowan Hartley. Okay. My former gaffer. And had a uh, son for the first time, roughly the same time as ah, I had. Congratulations. So, yeah. um, he asks, is a cheesecake actually a cheese pie? Ooh, okay. I did see this. I'd like to have seen more of his thinking out for this one well it was just the question i'll be honest with you okay okay he literally just sent he just sent the question i said yes thank you i love that see he's a cheesecake a cheesecake where does the cheese history come from because a cheesecake i'm not tasting any cheese there as far as i'm aware cheese isn't implemented in the cooking of a cheesecake i think it is you had you had cheese for cheesecake it's soft cream cheese but oh cream okay there you go cream cheese okay but not traditional not your mature cheese. cheddar <laughs> grated into a pan let it melt kind of cheese. No. You're not adding a layer of cheese onto that cheesecake. Although I would probably add cheese to it. I don't... Because it's got a crumbly base, I would say it is a cake, not a pie. Pie is pastry, I'm, isn't it? I'm going to say neither. Okay. Well, how are you classing it? A cheese what? So, a cheese tart. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can see that. So I looked for definitions of a cake and a pie. Hmm. And this is what I found, David. Okay. A cake is an item of soft, sweet food made from a mixture of flour, fat, eggs, sugar, and other ingredients, baked and sometimes iced iced or decorated. But that is a cheesecake. No, but it's it's not, though, because it hasn't got flour in it. No, that's me. That, that is what they're describing is basically what we've traditionally been told is a cheesecake. But it's actually a cheese tart. Yeah, but so yeah, but that's not that's not your traditional cheesecake. So society has lied to us, Mike. <laughs> it is a cheese tart. And the definition of a pie mm-hmm. is a baked dish of fruit or meat and vegetables, typically with a top and base of pastry. Yeah, that's what I mean. You, you know that kid who got Sainsbury's to change tiger bread to giraffe. I do indeed. Bread? I think we should do the same with this and we will get social media recognition. Well, so change it worldwide. Yeah. Right? There's even there's even a, a, a restaurant called Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, well, we'll... You want us... We'll, we'll, what, pay for it? No, we won't. I think we'll make... We'll take them to court 
um, and will sue the makers of the uh, whatever the cheese cheesecake to take change to cheese tart. We will win, and it will be coming a heartwarming, uplifting film in years to come on Netflix. How how are you describing uplifting and heartwarming? <laughs> To, you know, ragtag people on their quest to vanquish the cheesecake overlords. You know, corporate offices, grey, and there's us trying to, oh, you've lied to us, you. Am I putting this in the middle page of my other notebook of yes. ideas if the podcast yes. fails? Yes, put it on, put right, it on. Yeah. Heartwarming film, take on the cheesecake people. Fine. Okay, so we're saying cheese tart, unfortunately. Definitely a cheese one. tart. It's not a cheesecake. Technically, it's not a cheesecake or a cheese pie. It's a cheese tart, but... I do bloody love a cheesecake. Yes, very much so. Any have, you ever tried, have you ever tried it with custard? Uh, I don't think I have. I usually, usually just have cream if I have it. Cold, for me, cold, cold cheesecake. No, no, no. Cold cheesecake, warm custard, okay, okay. mixed together. I'll give that a try then. I'll put that on the list. Um, any other questions on listening Next question Next question is from your sister. Oh, hello. Catherine Evans. Yes. Um, she asks... If you could have one detachable body part, what would be the most useful and why? Oh, okay. Hmm. Would it, I'd say, would it be your arm? And then you can just whack people from a distance with it. Okay. That's just boring. That was, that was, what that was my first thought. Okay. And <laughs> now we're stuck. Um, <laughs> would it be your I, foot? Your, no, your, I, I your... went with my eyeball. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. So you could just and roll then, it under doors. You could, yeah, you could. I mean, I don't know if I'd roll it under the doors because of the dust. I don't want a dusty, filthy eyeball coming back into my socket. I was thinking more just going around the corner and holding my eyeball and going, <laughs> oh, they're kissing. You could do the like, same. You could do the same with an ear, though, couldn't you? You could just leave an ear in a room and you could, you could spy on people in that way, a listening device. True. Yes, because you could. Because with the eye, you could see what's going on, but you might not necessarily... Oh, no, you, so, if, if it's, it depends if it's still attached to you, but actually the eye would probably be better. New idea, David. New idea. Okay. If the podcast doesn't yeah. uh, succeed, we'll yeah. form a detective team. Yeah. I'll have my loose eyeball. <laughs> you have the loose ear. Yeah. We will so- solve cases like that. Okay. We could call it... Eye ear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a name there. Someone Detective mock- services. Someone mock up a movie poster with <laughs> your eye out and my ear detached. It'd be brilliant. We could. It could be a TV show. Can I? We could, I could, we I could I can, have merchandise for, for our YouTube listeners. Can I? I think I can do this. Can I show you that I can slightly move my ears? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, go for so it. I'm going to try and go to the side because I show this to Mary and she was laughing hysterically. And Catherine, I'm sure I've shown this to Catherine before, but she was just like, "I'm getting you know, closer to the camera now." <laughs> she was on near divorce. Here we go. Because you're going to say this. Is... <laughs> Hang on, here we go. Ready? Anything? No. Okay. You're just moving your head, David. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just doing this. Oh, I think it's too late and I can't prove the magic, but I can do it. So so you would do ear, I think that's a great choice. It's yeah, a great choice. I say ear. Okay. Um is that listening Thank questions? You very much, Any more um, questions or we we'll have one more, then you one decide more. if to edit it out or not. <laughs> okay, okay. Um so Judy Geisler has emailed saying, Who is Gordon Bennett? As in the exclamation, Gordon Bennett. That's true, actually. This is a mythical person that has dodged us for time. Mm. Um, I like to think he lives in uh, Sussex. <laughs> right. Is he, he still alive? He's a greengrocer. <laughs> right. And he likes to, um, he's part of his um, National Southern League's basketball team. Wow. Okay, and then. And he once was the star, he was called the Michael Jordan of the League South 2 at one point. And then horrific injury meant he had right. to give it up. But now, after an inspirational chat from his grandson, he's uh, he's going to become that Michael Jordan character again of South League Two. What? Why? Why? Why the expression? Why is he now known as a uh, Gordon Bennett type? Because when guy? he used to slam dunk it, people would be like Gordon Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it came from. Okay. 
my version. What do you think? Where do you think Gordon Bennett came from? Well, I, I think it was someone's dad. Okay. That just would do things quite irregular, mm. quite out like not out of the ordinary. And then the guy would just be like, oh, Gordon Bennett. As if like, that, that's my dad. That's because, and I say this because me and my brother have got a, th- got a similar thing about my mum. Okay. And I just realised that I don't know if she knows about this. <laughs> what, you called you call her Gordon Bennett? No, um, that would be wrong. Uh, no, she'd do something like a, what my mum would do typically, like put up one of them stoppy I love you sons Facebook posts yep. on Facebook. Yeah. Neither of us like it. <laughs> but the thoughts there, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll look at it. We'll take a screenshot. We'll send it to what each of them go, oh, hashtag typical Alison. And I think, knowing what, that we do that to my mum, I love you to death, mum, don't hate me, I'm sorry. Knowing that I do that to my mum, I think that's a son. That's ju- and it's just cottoned on from that. Like their, yeah, mate, yeah. their mates have heard it and gone, oh, I quite like that, I quite like yeah. that. Gordon Bennett, Gordon Bennett, oh, who's Gordon Bennett? It was my mate's, my mate's dad, oh, Gordon Bennett, Gordon Bennett. And then we now say it, I mean, I don't say it, but other people say it as a, a form of expression. Yes. So we're saying that either Gordon Bennett is someone's dad, who just says things, yep. or a man in Sussex who's trying to become the Michael Jordan of the... That's exactly what we're team. saying, yes. Okay, good. Thank you for listening to questions. Thank as you always, very much. Um, at a daft question on Twitter, a daft question on Instagram, and at a daft question at gmail.com. Lovely. Beautiful. S- surprise question time? Surprise question time. It's time for surprise question. This is a part of the podcast where either of us answer, answer, ask a question that we don't know about. We haven't been pre-prepared for this. It's off the cuff, and this week it's Michael's turn to ask moi. So, Michael, what is your surprise question this week? Lovely cracking of the fingers there. Thank you. I was so relieved that one of them cracked. <laughs> David. Right. Yes, Michael. If the original five-piece Power Rangers yeah. were in a bar fight yes. with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles plus Splinter... Yeah. Who would win and why? Oh, this is good. Now, when you started that question off, I thought it was going to be about five, the the, the, boy, <laughs> the, the group, thinking we had S Club 7 one week. What is five going to be this week? Because they would fit in the rule of six. They're fine. Yep, they're fine. Right, okay. So what? Power Rangers, original, the, the OGs. Yeah, the so we're talking, we're talking Mighty Morphin, red, yep. black, blue, yellow, pink. Are we not having green? We're not having green. Oh, okay. That makes it interesting. No green. Okay. And against the original um, turtles, although they're not original, they've all always been the same. We splinter always as the well. Same. We splinter as well. Okay. So the thing with Power Rangers is if you just tap them, sparks fly out and they exaggerate. <laughs> yes. They just exaggerate their kind of three turns in the air. Yeah. <laughs> they'll be monologuing for ages because they'll be telling each other what needs to happen, but they'll be doing kung fu moves at the same time. Mm hmm. And I imagine as well, out like when they were originally f- filming, there's a lot of. So what? What did you say? <laughs> so you, you you've got a, you've got a helmet on. I, <laughs> I can't hear you. What? Lift lift it up. Lift, so that, lift yeah. Lift it up. <laughs> so that might be an issue as well. So that's communication at the window. Also, if you just throw some like drink at the helmet, it might blur their vision. You've got to get yep. some window wipers on that as well. Mm. Whereas the turtles, I mean, let's be honest with you, why you need a bandana over the eyes? What identity are you hiding? You're a giant, massive turtle. Well, you don't know which turtles are which, <laughs> do you? So all they can you do don't is just look swap at a turtle ban- and think. They can just swap bandanas. I'm like, oh, hang on a second. I don't know which one Donatello is anymore. <laughs> are you Donatello? <laughs> um, Have you got nunchucks or not? <laughs> I think, and also, I said the turtles have all got weapons, haven't they? But then don't the Power Rangers, don't some Yeah, they have um, guns. guns. But be- Now, this is what I mean. Now, I said bar fight. Right, so we're okay. not having the weapons that the Turtles ah, have, okay, the guns, okay. or certainly the Megazoids that Power Rangers oh, would use. damn. It's just, you just a call, straight you just, up bar fight. You just call that Megazoids and just trample on the, the... Yeah. Although the hard shell of the Turtle, would you be able to trample on it so easily? Probably. If you got near it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think you've got to go with... I would go for the Turtles on this one. I think okay. they've got the strength. They've got the shell as a protective cushion anyway. Mm-hmm. 
if they are being, if they feel like they're losing and they need to have a bit of rest, I just go inside the shell. Okay. And you can't do they anything. need a rest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can't, you know, once they go inside that shell, what are the Power Rangers are going to do? They're just kicking Nothing. their shell. They're going to break their foot when they kick that shell. Every chance. Um, yeah, I'm going Turtles all the way on this one. Turtles, Power Rangers. Yeah, I, I agree with you. We need a Celebrity Deathmatch remake. Oh, that'd be great. Yes. But I think That'd Turtles all the way on this one. I, I went with Turtles for a slightly different reason, but I, I just think Splinter's a badass. Yes. Like, I don't think there's any one of the Power Rangers that could beat him. So you think that Splinter could take on all five? I I, I think he'd, he'd get good odds for it, yeah. Mm. I think I just, so. If, I imagine one-on-one -on -one, Splinter could kick any of their asses. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's going to be a, a common situation. There's going to be at least I I would imagine tactic wise, Red Ranger would go after Splinter. Yeah, because he's the leader of the group. He's, he's, he's the leader. Yeah, um, but I just don't think I don't think you can you can beat Splinter. He's he's his knowledge of kung fu and karate surpasses all of them all of them combined. Zordon would shit himself and just see it floating in that tube. <laughs> He's just a, Zordon was just a wavy face in a tube. <laughs> Although when it was the the Power Rangers movie, when that shattered that illusion, when it's just this yes. old man on some crystals, and I'm thinking this isn't Superman. What, it was a good what, movie though. It was a good movie. Was I liked good, that. If Doctor you, Ooze, was it Doctor Who? Yes, it was. If you watch that movie back though, the animation is dreadful. The CGI. If you watch any of the Power Rangers back, <laughs> yeah. not the movie because they don't contain the original five. Um, but I also think, looking back, that Kimberly Atch Pink Ranger isn't actually that fit. And I was a bit gutted because I used to fancy the pants <laughs> off her. And then when I watched it as an older guy, it's a bit like, oh, oh, was that it? Oh, dear. That's my two pence, anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, we're going for Turtles wins that. Yeah, I think Turtles we've got agreement. Every day. Right, should we do last question, Mike? Crack on, David. Let's crack, crack on. on. Uh, Mike, Ikea. It's a wonderful place. The wonderful life of every day, as the advert says. Mm -hmm. And we like, as many people, going out there and buying stuff. But my question to you, Mike, is does going to Ikea count as a day out? Yes. It does. Now, first, optimal question. What is your preferred time of arrival at Ikea? Um, it depends when you go. Okay. I think if it's weekend, you've got to go early think so i think because if it's anything past 11 then it's busy that's true i mean i like going in the afternoons maybe like seven minutes to two or something like that but S not six minutes to two it no, has to just, be seven minutes to two seven minutes to two seven okay. two it has to be that precise time okay um yeah i just Why? think it's, i don't know Seven two, it's nice, isn't it? Really, it's a nice optimal time. Oh, you little! <laughs> uh, that took me a while. You little! I was, I was getting worried that you weren't getting that. Um, but yeah, anyway, seriously, I think you've got to go in the morning, haven't you? Just to beat all the beat all the cues. <laughs> Don't worry, they'll be. I can't plenty. believe I fell for that. <laughs> I cannot believe I fell for that. But there's a long season ahead, Mike. I think you'll have plenty of opportunity to repay that favour for this uh, season. Um, anyway, yeah, so... <laughs> is that the only reason we've got this question in? <laughs> no, no. But in fairness, when I thought the question and saw the results, I did think, how can I squeeze that in? And I thought the <laughs> IKEA one's the best one. Anyway, yeah, so I agree. Weekends or whenever you go, you've got to go morning, beat the traffic. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then you do your shop, and then you can finish your restaurant. Yes. True, true. Do you, well, not not finish, but you can go like halfway through, can't you? But time it. The... I think you've got to go. I think the restaurant's good. You've either got to start at the restaurant, build up the energy, or finish at the restaurant. Do you ever get like the hot dogs and whatever at the counter when you after you pay? Because I don't trust them. <laughs> what do you mean? Why don't you? Like, trust I, I just them? like if they're not good enough at restaurant, then they're not then they're not good enough for me to finish to like finish the day on. I just think it's ground up dog meat. I think that's hot dogs in general though, Mike, to be honest. No. It's pure 
pure, pure meat, pure pig. Um, I will put a controversial IKEA opinion out there. I am listening. Ra- I'm one of the rare people that does not like the meatballs. Okay. I at what, all like you yes, don't like no. them at all. I don't because I don't it, mind them, but I'm not like mm, I'm, I'm not all for the meatballs. I'm re- I'm one of those people that really wants to like them, but mm-hmm. when I tried them, and I then tried them a second time, thinking, oh, maybe the first time, I don't know, maybe they were off or something. But I just don't for some reason those IKEA meatballs. I don't like the taste. I know there's okay. been people listening to this going, they're the greatest thing ever. Oh, there will be. I think yeah. my brother's a massive fan of the uh, of the meatball. But I always have to go with the other options, unfortunately. I always get excited to go IKEA because you can have a meal for under a fiver. Yeah, it's great. But then I remember as soon as I like, yeah, I'll get a drink, and you go to the, go to the drink section, you think, oh, it's it's oh yeah, it's a lot cola. Of... Yes, <laughs> it's Royal Cola. It's yeah, it's Panda Pops. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just, and then you have to have lemonade because. You can't really get them in it wrong, can you? How, what's your theory, Nike, in terms of... I like going when I know I'm buying things. If it's a case of going, oh, we'll have a look around, I hate it because it seems to just take Oh, yeah, I, I, don't think, I don't think we've ever gone to look around. I mean, we'll look around as we're going for something because you've got no fucking yes. choice. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think we'd just sit there and go, oh, should we just see what's in Nike here? I think there's been times when we've gone, oh, let's, we might need to get something. So let's go around and look yep. for ideas. But I hate that because you know you're not really going to get anything. And that, therefore, that journey around the store takes longer. Mm. Where if I know I'm getting something, I get quite excited for it. I'll go pick up these things. And oh, there's something else to spot. And we've got the cash for it. Yep. Yeah, let's go, go get well, that. We, we went last, well, start of the week, I think it was, um, of last week to get um, Ivy's high chair. Yeah. Only 12 quid. Yeah. All the, all the all the all the baby kid stuff there is great. Yeah, yeah. We end up getting, I think, um at least one soft toy, if not two for her. Mm-hmm. Um but I I will I don't know if I should say this. I'll like the opening bit that you look at all the rooms and the living rooms or whatever. Mm. And there's the one or two, and I'll I'll see them at the corner of my eye and think, yeah, if I ever became single again. <laughs> <laughs> I do find I like it that style. I do find it amazing how they make these like box rooms and like they're like yeah. the rooms that you always want. You're thinking, oh god, how can I put that in my house? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a man cave. That's incredible. And you know, in reality, if you were single and you've had to oh, try no, and make yeah, it, I couldn't be that, asked. <laughs> that would <laughs> never happen. Or you'd never have the energy for the upkeep to no. make it at that perfect level all the time. But it's nice living in a fantasy world where you think. <laughs> That day when I might become single again, <laughs> yeah. you'll do. Oh, but yeah, but I, yeah. I, I mean, I enjoy that. I, I, I don't dread going to IKEA. No. I don't think, oh, I wish we wouldn't go. I, I, I enjoy it. I quite, I quite like it. Just having a look around and seeing how cheap things are. Yes, and I've given up many, many years ago of taking the pencil and the piece of paper and writing this stuff down. Yeah, you just, just take a photo. Yeah, just use your phone. Yeah. The amount of times Lucas has gone, Mike, come here, take a photo of this. Just get your, get your camera out, Mike. And then, then yeah, I'm, I'm, I've am I'm got the responsibility then of telling her where things are. And if they're not there, then it's my fault. But it's not my fault because I've taken the photo. And apparently it's not that photo. It was the other photo that I should have taken. And it is my fault. Oh. And then it's the bit at the end when if you are getting things and you're getting furniture, you're then going to pick it up from the self-serve aisles. And then yeah. you don't yeah, yeah, realise yeah. how many bits it comes in and how big some of these items and heavy items are. Yeah. And you get a trolley, and you don't realise that, crap, that trolley is not going to accommodate the things we need to get and the, and the weight of them. What's, what's the best bit of your trip to Ikea? It's still the food for me. Mine, the food is, is a very, very close second. Right, okay. But for me, it's when you go into the car park and you see people arguing. It's great. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay. I don't think I've seen this. What example? You've not like couples arguing that they can't fit it in or you've done that wrong. I've not. Or we're going to have to get the other car in or something like that. I think Wensbury, IKEA, must be a a place of harmony because I don't really see that. Because we've not had arguments, but we've had like, oh, why have we got this? We can't fit it in or whatever. We've had mild discussions about it. Yeah. But I have genuinely seen couples arguing. And me and Lucy are like, oh, oh, what's going on? What's going on? (laughs) Grab that popcorn that we got for 2p. I, I, by far, it's the best. 
It's the best part of the trip. You, 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 the moment I walk out of the car park, I'm looking for couples to see what they're putting in the car. <laughs> but now, but obviously we went to get the high chair. Now, because we've got the pram in the back of the car, we did wonder, like, shit, are we going to get this in the car? Oh, and you are going to be that couple. Yeah. <laughs> but thankfully, it came in three pieces. So it, I think it, I just kind of sat around it. <laughs> so everything was fine. But no, oh. I would say that, yeah, the restaurant bit is if if she says yeah, let's get some lunch there. Boom, great, can't wait to yeah. get there. But yeah, next time you go, just have a look, see if you can find a couple, and then just watch. <laughs> unless <laughs> unless the reason you can't see a couple is because you are that couple. <gasps> oh. oh, Inception. Are you the couple that argue? And you've got so. nothing, you oh, have we, no idea what's happening be. behind you. We might be. Maybe. I think it's harmonious, but we are the ones that are creating the dystopia in the yeah. harmony. Oh, okay. I have to keep an eye out that next time I go to our gear. <laughs> Let us know, David. <laughs> um, and I think that's it, Mike. That's it's been wonderful, David. It's been it's wonderful. It's been great. Uh, Mike, reminder of people, if they want to get in contact with questions and their own correspondence to their answers for this week. So, listeners, um, rather than just asking either myself or David how to get in touch with us, just listen to this next part of the, sh- of the yes. uh, podcast. Tweet us or DM us at a daft question. Instagram us at a daft question. Email us a daft question at gmail.com or follow us, subscribe, like us, and comment on YouTube and just search for a daft question. It's quite simple. Anything with a daft question. I googled a daft question before, and we were the first thing that came up. I was well yes. impressed. We've been. I don't the... know if that. I don't know if that's because I constantly just look and go on Spotify to listen to us and YouTube or whatever. But it was the f- first thing that came through. I think it was um, Instagram that came up. Well, we've beaten the SEO rank. We've got the SEO right there. We've done whoop, it. Whoop. We're number one on Google. Come on, worldwide fame awaits. <laughs> right, I think we'll leave it there. It's another night of questions, another night done. We'll be back next week, everybody, with more questions. Uh, Michael, would you like to say goodbye to the video and audio listeners? Goodbye to the video and audio listeners. <laughs> and it's bye from me. We'll see you next time.